this focus. Yes, it does. Very nice. Okay. So I've actually uh, prolonged the regular uh, jumper cables because these are complete shit and I have much better ones over here. Uh, do keep in mind you will have these wires, right? So we're talking about uh, ground, ground 3 volts. We're going to be using 3 volts for programming. Keep in mind some uh, boards will want 1V8. Um, but most of these Chinese one ones work with 3.3, uh, or at least they tolerate it, I don't know. Haven't had any problems so far. Um, we're going to use master out slave in clock CSB. This is kind of a board select, chip select board or some shit. I don't know what this stands for. Clock and uh, master in slave out. So this is basically an SPI connection. Uh, what you'll need to do on top is get a 10k or larger, so 10 to 50 to maybe 100k resistor, and this will use to pull the um, pull the SPI uh, pull the SPI uh, pin up basically. And so this is a pretty big problem. I'll upload a picture of this with the pinout actually so if i don't do this uh, do remind me in the comments and i will do this the newer hyt boards do not have the pinout labeled for some fucking reason so they're flipped they're kind of like this so grounds at the bottom the way i'm holding them but uh yeah you will have to um you'll have to look at a, a pinout that I provide because, yeah, unfortunately, HYT has gotten bored of, of labeling their boards. So, yeah, that's it's a damn shame, but it is what it is. We will make do. So, I'll, uh, I'll try and stay in shot, although this is ridiculously difficult. I have a very small frame that I have to sit in. So I'm going to assume, uh, so first of all, this letter refers to the uh, last letter of the uh, name of the channel, right? So O would be master in slave out, O would be my zo, and I would be mozi. And I will write something on the screen if this happens to be wrong, but I will for the time being assume that I am correct as always. Anyway, let's just start from the bottom and then work our way up. So ground is, is the first one, I know this for sure. And uh, I'm going to be using the TS-80, running Raleem's custom firmware. The only problem with this iron is it has a shit ton of dust gathering under the screen, but it is what it is. It has a very cool boost function, which you can set up to, and it works wonders for ground planes. And you would say that this is a small tip. So you would say that, ah, oh, maybe I'm cheating, maybe this is a pretty small head. No, no. I'm going to show you that this can be done, in fact, with the regular, what is it called, um, D2S, D25, I think it's a D25, the D25 tip, so you're going to be using the big boy, mine lost, small portion of it, ow, small portion of itself, so we're going to be using flux. This is uh, very important for this kind of operation, right? You need enough temperature to not vaporize your flux. So I'm working, as you saw, at what my iron says is 280. I'm not sure it's calibrated, but... Uh, but that is what I'm working at, and that's basically slightly above, so like 10, 20 degrees above what the solder melts at, and this will keep the flux around for way longer. And you want to be very generous with this shit. It is very cheap, so... Yep. I'm using a tiny bit of paper, not to drip on the, on the table. This is where I cleaned the iron earlier. Do not get super disgust. Let's see what we can do. So I'm just applying a layer of solder on all of these connections. Right, so kind of like this, right? Just go over them. And if if your iron is bridging across them, it means your temperature is too low and you have too little flux. So they have to stay 
right, separated. And so let's just start bridging the wires and I would recommend fanning them out. So starting like this and then going, making your way in a semicircle type way. Maybe I just looked in the phone, although oh, I'm in soldering with the viewfinder. That is really bad. No, I can't do this. I used to be quicker at this one. I had to do two or three a day, but I have since gotten massively spoiled. Okay, so ground would be first and then it would be V. And so with the voltage pin, what I've done is put a diode here, just in case I'm powering this board, I don't want anything to leak back into my computer. Should be fine, but um, yeah, better safe than sorry. And so for this, we'll uh, be using a resistor and we'll be using both legs of the resistor to connect onto the board. And so what I want to do is just uh, tack this onto the resistor. So let's do this right quick. All right, that is good enough. Technically, I would want this sitting kind of like this. But this will be coming pretty much at the same height, so we'll uh, be cropping these at the same length. Okay. And by the way, this is, I think, 18K or, or 22K. I don't know, I'm colorblind mostly, and I've uh, never, never tried learning the resistor code, unfortunately. I am pretty lazy, I will have to say. So yeah, make sure these are really the same, same length. And get to soldering again. The angle is ferocious. So let's actually apply a new layer of flux. Right, this crap does wear out as you heat it up. Um, maybe, maybe we tin the resistor a little bit as well. Would not hurt. And let's try a big live four finger, four finger move. Ooh, just about. Okay, let's assume that's enough. Okay, again, good enough for the girls I go out with. And uh, let's check the pinout. So we have ground, voltage enable, SPI enable, and uh, we have them. All right, what's, what's up next? So up next is Mosey. So let's see where Mosey is. Mosey is, uh, is this.
you will want to get these as thin as possible. I'll try not to shade the area of interest this time, but um, again, this is very hard. And my tip is, is quite dry, so let's get some fresh solder onto it. Okay. Next up, K clock. So K clock would be the second one to the bottom. Man, I really hate the colors I've chosen. So K is, which one? Oh no, K is yellow. I really love using yellow for clock. Yep. And I have. Okay, we're almost done. And we kept bridging these two pins, but uh, in the end looks fine. So what do we have left? Clock, I think we have CSB. You, yep. CSB. So CSB would be this uh, blue wire. Okay. Again, even more flux. And again, I heard someone say that the difference between an amateur soldering, the difference between amateur soldering and expert soldering is, is the amount of flux, and that is true. That really is true, and you really have to not buy shit Chinese solder because then you have absolutely no chance of success in life. Absolutely none. Like you literally are setting yourself up for miserable failures. Because there's just no way, no way to use it. I have bought like a half kilo roll from China. And it was even amongst the most expensive ones, and it was complete shit. I threw it away. I literally threw it away. That was uh, very annoying and a big waste, but yeah, it is what it is. Maybe there are good brands, but um, yeah, I haven't found any, and I was very upset. So what I use very successfully is this CNL brand. So Sinel, I do love them, they're, they're a Polish company and their solder is by far the best I've ever used in my life and I love them. And yeah, cannot recommend it enough. And no, I'm not paid, but I am actually pretty poor at the moment. Okay. So these are pretty close to one another, but now yeah, fuck it. Bit of a solder dag here. I'll just skim that off. And the moment of truth. <laughs> 